a dream I know Deep up my feelings for you Hello reality viewers, welcome back again to Reality Latest Gist, the home of news and politics. For this channel, we they drop news every day and we they react to every video when it comes our way. And our reality news now we they drop for this channel and we they also they talk on as it be. If today not the first time we say they come across this channel, you are highly welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. And if you are returning subscribers, I appreciate all of you now for our massive support to this channel i say may god bless all of you now in jesus name amen i get video away i want to present to una this very moment and i'm going to follow now they watch the video after we don't watch them together make we drop our opinion constructively for the comment section like our videos and also share our videos if possible bye for now china london everywhere we all gave him the permit to go and he brought in two triple sevens he was paying leases of about maybe $250,000 per one. So which is half a million dollars and he was paying per month for the two aircraft. And he kept them for 18 months. And that is $9 million and didn't go anywhere. And by the time he was ready to start, his engine, landing gear was due, his engine was due. Depending on what it is that was due, if you put together another maybe $10 million. So he was starting that business with minus $19 million. Who does that? However, AP's boss, Alan Oyema, is faulting Sirika's comments and he joins us now for a right of reply. Good morning, Mr. Oyema, and welcome to the morning show. Good morning. Well, Chairman, uh, please, thank you very much for joining us. So this is basically a right of reply conversation. Mrs. Tony Olajide, uh, your chief operating officer at AP, already issued a statement stating spurious claims, as she puts it. Uh, by uh, Senator Hadi Sirica in the conversation we had with him uh, on this channel on Sunday. Maybe you want to go back to those spurious claims as those claims affect EPIs and the aviation industry generally where you are a shareholder with regard to Nigeria. Well, it's quite very unfortunate uh, that it ever happened. I'm not here to fight a battle with the ex-minister. It is not in my DNA to pick fights. But I must say that it is very shameful for an ex-minister of government, somebody who has been in, like he said, 20 years ago he was in House of Representatives, he was uh, a senator, and in the last eight years he has been a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria going to sit down here to expose a lot of things for the sake of and love of nation. But I must point out certain things. For an ex-minister of aviation to come out to say indirectly or directly that his airline or an airline he supervised is so incompetent, leased two aircraft, paying $500,000 monthly, for 18 months, incurring $19 million. And he was saying it, he was peddling falsehood barefacedly. He never blinked. He was speaking as a matter of fact that that happened. Imagine the damage this minister had done to the image and reputation of Epis with what he has done as an incompetent entity. Meanwhile, he was peddling Pure falsehood. How do we now believe every other thing he has said on that day? How do we believe that? So to start with, <laughs> Epis doesn't have two triple sevens. Epis has three. And those three are totally purchased. Two of those planes are in fact ex-Emirates. One is ex-Singapore Airlines with everything you can think of inside those planes, they were outrightly purchased by EPIS. Therefore, we never paid a lease rent out to anybody. We never incurred, in the first place, you can't even use 250,000 to rent a 777. How much do you pay for a single air aircraft? No talk of a 777. So this is a minister trying to fool the entire nation in his desperate bid to fool everybody, to hoodwink the nation. He was, he was 
peddling falsehood on APs. So how do we as a nation believe every other thing he was saying out there? The Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority is there. You can contact the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority. They are the regulators. He was in charge. He signed the import permit of that aircraft. Or those aircraft. He signed the import permit. You cannot import any aircraft into the country without the Minister of uh, Aviation approving. He signed the import. If it was going to be a lease, it's stated in, in the letter of application to bring in an aircraft. No aircraft comes into the country without the Minister of Aviation approving. He must be the one to sign the importation permit before you bring them in. So he did all that. And he knew quite well that those planes were not leased. They were not rented. They were fully paid for. And he told the entire world that we leased those planes and uh, just to make us look bad. And at the same time, President Ethiopia, his partners. So now you've come out to debunk what the former Minister of Aviation has said. The first question is, was Airpeace, your organization, or perhaps any local operator, interested in partnering with the Nigerian government for Nigeria Air at any point? Were there any moves made? And what was the outcome? Either I'm going to sit down here to expose a lot of things for the sake of and love of nation. But I must point out certain things. For an ex-minister of aviation to come out to say indirectly or directly that his airline or an airline he supervised is so incompetent, leased two aircraft, paying $500,000 monthly for 18 months, incurring $19 million. And he was saying it he was peddling falsehood barefacedly. He never blinked. He was speaking as a matter of fact that that happened. Imagine the damage this minister had done to the image and reputation of Epis with what he has done as an incompetent entity. Meanwhile, he was peddling pure falsehood. How do we now believe every other thing he has said on that day? How do we believe that? So to start with, <laughs> APIS doesn't have two triple sevens. APIS has three. And those three are totally purchased. Two of those planes are in fact ex-Emirates. One is ex-Singapore Airlines. With everything you can think of inside those planes, they were outrightly purchased by APIS. Therefore, we never paid a lease renter to anybody. We never incurred, in the first place, you can't even use 250000 to rent a 777. How much do you pay for a single eye aircraft? No talk of a 777. So this is a minister trying to fool the entire nation in his desperate bid to fool everybody to hoodwink the nation. He was... He was peddling falsehood on APs. So how do we as a nation believe every other thing he was saying out there? The Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority is there. You can contact the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority. They are the regulators. He was in charge. He signed the import permit of that aircraft. Or those aircraft. He signed the import permit. You cannot import any aircraft into the country without the Minister of uh, Aviation approving. He signed the import if it was going to be a lease, it's stated in, in the letter of application to bring in an aircraft. No aircraft comes into the country without the Minister of Aviation approving. He must be the one to sign the importation permit before you bring them in. So he did all that. And he knew quite well that those planes were not leased. They were not rented. They were fully paid for. And he told the entire world, that we list those plans and uh, just to make us look bad. And at the same time, President Ethiopia, his partners. So now you've come out to debunk what the former Minister of Aviation has said. The first question is, was Airpeace, your organization, or perhaps any local operator, interested in partnering with the Nigerian government for Nigeria Air at any point? Were there any moves made? 
and what was the outcome? United Nigeria. On Sunday, when you ask the question, why APIs? Because he must have mentioned APIs up to 15 times. I don't know what APIs have done to him. He said, uh, okay, not only APIs, and again, um, uh, of uh, United Nigeria. And he, he deliberately forgot to mention the other ones. Are, are we trying to play the ethnic cards? Thank God the leadership of Dr. Abdulmunab Yunus Sarina has given ARN a teeth to bite. That man is a nationalist. Uh, Dahir Manga is from Kasina State. He owns Max Air. Dr. Abdulmunab Yunus Sarina is from Kano State. He owns Azman. Both of them, myself, Epis, Top Brass, owned by Roland Iyayi, and Obiara Konko of United Nigeria went to court. And those people are still in court. So it's not an ethnic thing, it's a Nigerian thing. Okay. And today, today, I have to use this opportunity to congratulate uh, our brother, uh, Alhaji Dahil Manga. He's launching his first 777 today, yet we don't have capacity. Okay, so one of the things says that you don't have capacity, but I see that you, you are having partnership with the government of Antigua, other countries are calling you to come and help set up their national flag carrier, but they say you don't have capacity. I want you to respond to that. And also, you don't have capacity, but during COVID-19, you went to everywhere Nigerians were to bring them back home when COVID-19 was raging on and all of that. And you've also helped with evacuation. But the conversation about you not having capacity, I mean, what would you like to say as regards all of that? And why I kept on saying say it is because the things we live on say destroy our country. Say the absolute truth. How do you feel being treated this way, you know, with the Minister of Aviation? And also the certification. Did Nigeria Air pass that certification, you know, the AOC certification and all of that? Please, I want you to tell the absolute truth about how you've been treated this way and other airlines so that Nigerians will know the truth. We keep saying we don't want to talk, we don't want to talk. This country keeps getting destroyed every day. We want to be the voice of the people. Let the people know. You know, uh, Rufai, the truth is, uh, we are, I'm a student of nonviolence, nonviolence education. So sometimes there are things we manage uh, in order not to hit up the policy somehow. But the truth is this, we have to speak up. That's why we went to court in the first place. Now, he said we don't have uh, capacity. All those falsehoods were meant to demean the local operators, the indigenous Nigerian airlines, in favor of this charade they've put up with Ethiopia. That's all. To be allowed, even at the fake meetings, how many times, even the president, the former president, President Buhari, Muhammad Buhari, shut down this national air project at a time. One man is just hoodwinking the country into believing that this is needed. All they need to do is to set up a strong fly carrier. If you do the, I mean, if you provide the enabling environment for people to operate, more people will invest in the system. Now about capacity. He told the world that we were low in capacity. He told the world on television that APIS was giving Dubai to fly, to conduct flight operations into Dubai. Are they flying now? APIS is no longer flying to Dubai because they are low in capacity. I see. Whoever advised Senator Hadi Sirika to come on television to defend the indefensible has do not done him any good. The whole world knows. We started operations into Dubai, April, I mean July 5th, 2019. We never stopped until COVID. Everybody stopped. When uh, COVID uh, stopped, we started. UAE decided for whatever reason to ban, complete ban on issuance of visas to Nigeria. Epi stopped going to Dubai. Emirates stopped coming to Nigeria. Neither Epis nor Emirates is plying this route now. None of them. So why should the Minister of Government barefacedly come on television that have this kind, have this kind of outreach to the world, to you know, spoof falsehood? because you want to paint the indigenous operators black and blue. Now, he said EPIS doesn't have capacity. The same EPIS, when the entire world shut down, during the lockdown in 2020, 
because of uh, COVID, COVID-19. APIS went to China on three occasions, bringing back Nigerians. That is a 14, 15 hours non-stop flight, deploying our triple sevens to go ahead to bring Nigerians back to their homeland proudly three times. Yet, APIS doesn't have capacity. APIS went to India 12 times, bringing Nigerians. Most Nigerians that went to India didn't have money to even Ethiopia to bring them back. I deployed my jets. APIS deployed our jets, went there. And the Indi those we brought back, let us put it in a newspaper, to thank us. We brought them back to their country, free of charge, with 12 sorties to India. Yet, APIS doesn't have a uh, uh, capacity. Epis went to Thailand, brought Nigerians back. Epis doesn't have capacity. Epis went to Malaysia, brought Nigerians back. Epis doesn't have capacity. Epis went to Indonesia, brought Nigerians back. They don't have capacity. In Malaysia, uh, uh, Indonesia, Nigerians went to the embassy, almost attacked everybody they, because they were stranded. Epis deployed, went there and brought them back. Epis went to South Africa. During COVID, brought Nigerians back. Epis also went to England, to the UK, brought Nigerians back, went on a second one. The UK authorities said, oh no, you don't come again. They canceled whatever they gave us, the permit they gave us. I paid for Nigerians. I hired an American, I mean, a European uh, carrier to bring them back. The flag government of Nigeria praised Epis for doing that, um, for love of country. We did others. We don't have capacity. During xenophobic attacks, Nigerians were being killed. Nigerian shops were being raided. Nigerians were being dehumanized in South Africa. I felt bad. He, to, he, he had told some people that, uh, oh, it was a, 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 a public stunt. Which kind of public stunt? This is how I've been. I have to be proud of myself, if, if not said, in this country. Without Allen Oyema, maybe Boko Haram would have been a choice, is a choice play. What happened in Niger Delta? I brought up myself. I initiated the program with my own funds, brought the entire Universal Rhode Island Center for Nonviolence and Peace Studies, paying hundreds of millions, bringing in the entire faculty here to train and transform militants with my own money. I was doing it for several years from 2005 to 2008. Until Yaradwan came and asked Timia Laibe, who is this Alan Yema? I have a security report that this guy is decimating militancy. And they brought me. The rest is history today. I've always contributed to the well-being of this country. And all I get from some government officials is this kind of thing. They do all sorts of things, fight you from different angles. And this is what is happening. Yet we don't have capacity. APIS doesn't have capacity. We deployed our triple sevens went to South Africa, rescued Nigerians during xenophobic attacks. On two occasions, Nigerians walked tall during that period. Nigeria as a nation was respected worldwide for what APIS did on their behalf. Nigerians felt proud. He needed to see. Why, why did I break down inside the plane when they arrived? Yes, you saw me crying inside the aircraft. It was because I saw another woman carrying a child. And the woman was praying for me and saying, see, it was an Igbo guy that was carrying, that he lost, she lost a child in South Africa. That if you didn't come, maybe I would have died. And that, see, an Igbo guy was uh, helping uh, her to carry the other baby all the way from South Africa. They were all clinging to each other. They were singing national and Nigeria became one. This is what we are using APIs to do in the country. It's not about money. When you come to APIs, it's many Nigeria we don't discriminate. I've trained Northerners, Southerners, Southwest, Southeast, giving them a, a meaningful employment, not just a, the minimum wage in APIs is about 50,000 for cleaners. And we are in support of this present government of Ahmed Bolatinubu, we address our staff. We tell them, support this removal of subsidy. We are going to support you. And beginning this month, we are going to dish out palliatives to our staff in support of the government. This is what we've been doing. And the Minister of Government came out there and said, we don't have uh, 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 capacity. And we did all this. And recently, we deployed to Sudan. We deployed to Sudan to bring back Nigeria yes, free of charge, yet we don't have capacity. Where was Ethiopia? Did Ethiopia do that? I'm going to come to Ethiopia. Ethiopia wanted what they're doing now with the national carrier. They wanted to do it with me for love of country. I turned it down. April 10, 2019, in a letter. They came to me. 
They wanted APs to collaborate with them. They took us to Addis Ababa. We signed MOU. And they said in the MOU, uh, oh, we need to push out uh, golf carriers. I said, no problem. We are, mind you, I'm very proud of what Ethiopia has achieved as an ally. That the pride of Africa. I like what they've achieved, no doubt. So we tried to collaborate. Then when we got to the nitty gritty of the meeting, what they wanted was to come into this place do local flying, then use Epis consign to fly the whole world, about 150 Basa, while paying me royalties, paying Epis royalties. I said, where does the, I would have been getting millions of dollars. And one of them joked, Alan, you don't need to be buying planes again, nothing. I said, where does this leave my country? In the letter I wrote to them, I said, where does this leave, my, where does this leave my nation, Nigeria? You will destroy the jobs in Nigeria. Uh, you kill the other airlines. Yeah, for, no, sir, please. You kill the yeah, other airlines in Nigeria. Uh, and, uh, APIS will be growing. Uh, but, I mean, airline and APIS will be swimming in millions of dollars. So we rejected it in a letter. It's documented and it's in court today. So for people saying that we are afraid of competition, if I was afraid of competition, I had them on a platter of gold. I would have taken it, that offer, and I'll sit down. Okay, Mr. Hema, we have just about three minutes to go, unfortunately. But then an opinion in which Alexis Zion, you know, uh, is saying, look, that matter had already been challenged in court, and therefore, uh, Nigeria Air, the unveiling that was done on May 29, could go ahead. What's the status of that matter in court? You are a lawyer. And then secondly, quickly, Bassa bilateral air services uh, agreement mm -hmm. is one of the things that the association, the airline organization of Nigeria has been complaining about. Mm -hmm. Is it the case, as AON is alleging, that Sirica, as Minister of Aviation, did not help any airline with regard to BASA? Quickly, because we have just a few. I uh, was saying that um, because uh, 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 I don't know what he was saying, that the case was, uh, the, 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 the court orders have never been vacated. That is the truth. The court orders are subsisting. They've never been vacated. What they did on, the May, on May 26 was contemptuous of Nigeria's law. And inviting a foreign airline to come and disregard our, our, our I mean, disrespect our judiciary is very unbecoming of uh, a government official. That, I mean, uh, Alexion cannot go to court tomorrow and tell them that uh, the case has been vacated. It has never been vacated. You don't vacate it by word of mouth. But Basa, one thing is to, you apply, oh, I want to go to Lagos, I, want to, I mean, I want to go to London, I want to go to US, and the government gives you approval, where I go. That is one thing. The other one is you need the support of government to fight for you and fight truthfully too. London, that is the lowest hanging fruit for any airline. Why is it that Epis, that doesn't have uh, anyway, uh, capacity, is doing China? We started flying to China. We are doing India. We are doing um, Jeddah now, Medina on, on the Hajj. And after Hajj, we continue the scheduled operations. We fly South Africa. So Nigerians now go to India using Epis twice a week, China once a week, we do all this. Now you get all this, but London, London, why is it that APs in the last seven years have not been, or six years, have not been able to get into London? When we applied, first of all, to get designation, it was difficult. Later, I was given designation. They gave us three slots. I mean, three frequencies. I cried out. I said, why three frequencies? This is a low-hanging fruit. This is a six-hour flight with a lot of traffic. I can do seven days, seven, I mean, daily flight to London. I discovered that another airline, they told me that another airline, Omni Blue, uh, uh, was also getting um, uh, some frequencies, and because and, and I was asking which airline is Omni Blue in Nigeria, but I don't want to go into that. <laughs> so later they increased it to four. Then we applied. When we applied, because you need to apply for TCO, they wrote Nigerian authorities to ask for, uh, do you know about this APIS? 
and I was denied. They said, no, we didn't know about it. We didn't know they applied. We didn't authorize them to apply. I said, for what? So TCO, that's the European Tech Country Operators Permit, you need to get it first before going to any European nation. UK inclusive. They stopped us. NCAA didn't allow APIS to apply to go into London for four years. We are stopped. Reason. Oh, Eric messed up in London. Medview messed up. Therefore, we want... Uh, we don't want to be disgraced. We almost lost this. Not under, not NCA under the present DG. In fact, to the credit of the present DG, he was the one that actually took up the gauntlet to fight for us. This present DG, uh, Captain uh, Musa Nuhu, he has done everything possible to get, in fact, almost stopping BA from coming here. So, but the other NCA before him, for four years, we are not allowed to go. So who was manipulating them? For no reason. When you go, you say, from above, fine. I wanted to fight. The love of country, I know some of the things I will say, it will turn into ethnic issues, and I, I, don't, I don't want that. So I kept my cool. Later, NCI said we should get IATA. We should do IATA audits on TCO. Mind you, APIS has IOSA. And that is the highest internationally recognized safety audit for any airline. APIS has been getting it. We are also certified. They say, no, you have to do uh, audit for the TCO. We now brought in IATA, spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to do that, hundreds of millions of naira to bring them in. At the end of the day, APIS passed the audit. And we told them, even IATA, sent to them. They said, okay, now we have to audit you ourselves. Hmm. The game continued until Musa Nuhu stepped in and said, enough is enough. En uh, enough is enough before they now allowed us to apply. So when we applied, we are still on it. We are still going through it. But when you look at this Nigerian air thing, Look at the shareholding. I have it here. The shareholding agreement. I have it here. For, without SACO, Nigeria would have been in trouble. The entire management, leadership of the entire management, the DFO, the CEO, the, um, uh, 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 all the management positions, the headship, Ethiopia, deputies, Nigeria. Then look at the shareholding. Ethiopia, 49%. There's a company called Fairfax. Who is this Fairfax? It's another Ethiopian, owned by an Ethiopian. They are transactional advisors. They are going to get 3%. They are going to get 1.45% of, the, of the, the, the shareholding capital, which, which is put at 250 million. Ethiopia will bring 122 million, but not as cash. Rentals. They'll bring what Ethiopia is bringing is only the Nigerian companies that are going to bring money, SACO and MRS. I have it here. The document is with us here. Ethiopia is not bringing a penny into Nigeria. Ethiopia will pay rentals for their own plan. It's written here, black and white. Pay rentals for their own plan for five years. So even if they pay the one twenty-two thousand, a piece alone is worth over two billion dollars. We. As I speak to you, Boeing is in my office now for the delivery of our 737 MAX, which is costing over a billion dollars. The 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 the, the E2s from Embraer that we've started receiving is costing about a billion dollars. Five of them have entered Nigeria. Ethiopia is bringing nothing, and they are going to earn 49 percent of your country's wealth. I call on President Abed Ahmed Bolatinubu to immediately dissolve this charade called Nigerian Air okay, and start Yama. his own thing. Oh, okay, Mr. Yama, I'm sure there will be uh, more opportunities to further discuss this subject, which is important uh, to Nigerians. So, uh, right of reply, that's a standard practice, and also Nigerians have the right to know. Thank you very much for joining